like to call to order the Board of Selectmen meeting and we will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we always start off with public audience, except last time I forgot it. <laughs> so, um, I just have a point of information. Um, at the last Board of Select meeting, I was cut off at four minutes and 24 seconds with two interruptions. The person before me was given five minutes and 30 seconds. I would like to use my full five minutes, and this is a violation of the court order if you want to read it five minutes so i'm going to start uh, do I, can i speak sure joan okay thank you let me but make sure i set my clock correctly though do it right okay and i make sure i have 800 words which is <coughs> five minutes i check with my word count all right let me get a little stopwatch here and it also yeah, says there are 20 minutes available if you don't finish okay just Sean, read it and you'll be up to date. Sean is going to start. When you get to, okay, jump up, now. 26 Whitcomb Drive. At the last Board of Selectmen meeting, I was, okay, at the, uh, as a longtime resident of Simsbury and advocate of town manager, I'm very concerned that town manager Maria Capriola has not met the expectations of a professional manager. To how manager Capri, uh, Maria Caprioli has treated the employees of the town with lack of respect, leading to grievance, grievances alleging unfair labor practices. The may, uh, many jobs have been uh, filled in a, uh, have not been filled in a timely manner, creating a toxic work environment. The blame for this fiasco falls with the selection process of the Board of Selectmen for a town manager and the continued excuses for poor management. The Board of Selectmen ignored the hotbed current stories about town manager Marie Capriola's abuse of power and allegations of favoritism in the hiring process and vindictive behavior against employees who filed grievances. Police Commissioner Mike Long had issues with Town Manager Marie Capriola from day one, and Police Commissioner Jim Fleming resigned as a result of the non-binding MOU instituted by Town Manager Marie Capriola. The Board of Selectmen is aware that Town Manager Marie Capriola asked an administrator to change a performance evaluation from excellent to poor as a pretext to her firing. This is not only unethical, but a cause for dismissal. The Board of Selectmen are aware of the low morale with employees in Town Hall. However, when First Selectman Wendy Maxtusis brings the issue forward, Selectman Sean Haskam tries to discredit her by bullying her with lies and misinformation. In a recent email I received under Freedom of Information, Sean Haskam sends an email to Town Manager Maria Capriola when discussing an issue to come before the Board of Selectmen, quote, you always make me look smart, end quote. It appears from this email that Town Manager Marie Capriola is running a shadow government, giving uh, talking points to a favorite selectman in return for their allegiance to her. The Board of Selectmen should not allow this charade to continue. The letter from the business community highlights Town Manager Marie Capriola's lies and deceptions. Their concerns were not gathered from gossip and innuendo. Don Stakem, reporter from the Hartford, currently recently wrote the article on April 2nd, dispute Rock Simsbury Town Hall, complaint came bad morale and favoritism amid exodus of staff. Another article was written by Don Stakem April 3rd, clarifying the first article, complaint claims bad morale, favoritism at Town Hall. The article states, quote, after assistant town planner Robin Newton was dismissed in late 2019, she formally complained that uh, Capriola had targeted her unfairly, perhaps because of her union activity. They ultimately rescinded Newton's termination and paid her $8,000 in a settlement. Newton resigned and retracted her complaint against Maria Capriola, end quote. It would appear that the complaint was a legitimate assessment of town manager Maria Capriola and this quid pro quo arrangement is blackmail. Another email I received from my Freedom of Information request between Sean Askham and Town Manager Maria Capriola's subject, alcohol and pack events, quote, for the future, in addition to beer and alcohol, perhaps canned beverages as well, question mark. Missy brought canned items up with me during our quarterly check in last, at, in last week, such as hard seltzer, since they are pre-packaging with specific alcoholic content included slash listed, end quote. Increasing alcoholic beverage consumption with hot seltzer during pack events 
is adding to the liability of the town and could be distributed to younger generation. It's surprising that town manager Mary Capriol would use Sean Askham to promote the use of increasing alcohol consumption when he allegedly, allegedly has found members with alcohol addiction. Selectman uh, Sean Askham has witnessed the evils of alcohol addiction and should be the advocate for reducing the alcohol at town John, property, John, not John, enabling John, more alcohol. Stop. Huh? Don't attack anyone personally. Excuse me? Board. Don't attack Where's people personally board? on this board. Oh. Stick to policy, please. Right. There has been much discussion about the use of exit letters to evaluate town manager Maria Capriola. Employees who leave town employment will not say anything against admission in fear of being called a disgruntled employee. The responsibility of the Board of Selectmen is to remove the town manager if they find just cause, not hiding behind exit letters to evaluate performance. The police department has changed from an analog transmission to a digital transmission. The fire department and public works on a digital network with clear transmissions. The transmission from the police dispatch and police offices are gobbled and sometimes unreadable. When officers are dispatched to a call, they should have clear transmission for reliability. This should be remedied immediately. It is a public safety issue. The budget is presented for a referendum vote is full of gimmicks and slush funds that will increase future budgets. Vote no on May 3rd. And all of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch, Twitter with Joan Co., and Facebook. Thank you for listening. Thank you. I, I do want to make two corrections because you corrected us on the timing. Um, my last name is Max Studis with a T, and it's Maria Capriola, just for the next time. Oh, thank you very much. I You're appreciate welcome. that. Yeah, thank you. Your name is a tough one. I know. <laughs> Um, does anybody else have public audience here? Oh, Mary? Good evening, members of the board, and uh, thank you for your service. And Who are you, please? Oh, Mary Glassman. <laughs> She's that one. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, it was much, much younger years. <laughs> Um, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak before you tonight, and thank you for considering uh, the capital improvement funding for Simsbury Community Television, now known as Simsbury Community Media. Um, as you saw during the pandemic, Simsbury uh, Community Media played a very valuable role in making sure that the people of Simsbury could watch their town government at work. So uh, we're really grateful for the donations that we receive the volunteers who are here tonight to support Simsbury Community Media, and the town for your support and uh, funding, uh, both uh, some of our operations and our capital improvements. Um, we have a big vision for Simsbury Community Media. We wanna cover more town meetings, we wanna cover more programming, uh, wanna cover more uh, town sports, so if there's any volunteers out there that wanna do a show or cover sports, um, we have a big vision for, um, for our community. It begins with making improvements to the studio. So your help tonight, should you vote yes, we hope you vote yes, will go a long way in making sure that vision becomes a reality. So thank you for your consideration. Um, I also sit on the Library Board of Trustees, so we're looking forward to uh, <laughs> having you talk with uh, hear our great vision for our strategic plan um, and seeing uh, our former chair, uh, Marianne O'Neill, who made the uh, effort to come up here tonight. So uh, thank you for that effort as well. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so let's move on to our presentation of the Simsbury Public Library Strategic Plan. Hello, I'm uh, Kathleen Miller. I am the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Simsbury Public Library. Thank you for your time um, tonight. Um, I, we want to present to you um, our strategic plan. And I first want to thank uh, Marianne O'Neill, our former chair of the Board of Trustees. Uh, this was a long process. She initiated it. Um, I'd like to thank my co-chair, um, Heather Getz, <laughs> one of your colleagues, and Amber Abuel, who was also on our committee. Um, and our director of the library, um, Lisa Karam, is here tonight. Um, and thanks to uh, Greg, the friends of the chair, or president of the Friends of the Simsbury Public Library, for being here, and other members of the board. Thank you for being here. Um, this uh, strategic plan is a process that the library undergoes every five years. Um, it's been going on for quite some time, and uh, so in. Uh, 
2021, it was a year long process, um, we put together um, a committee. We looked for a broad base of support amongst members of the community, all the stakeholders. Um, we filled our committee with people um, of all ages, seniors, members of uh, um, uh, young people and seniors as well. Um, and residents um, of the community, representing many as many community groups as possible. Um, this plan is our framework for moving the library into the future. Um, the library staff use it as a guide um, to, to guide the services um, for the, to, the wishes of the members of the community as identified in this plan. Excuse me, it's been quite a while since I've had to stand up <laughs> and speak in public, so just stumble a little. Um, okay, so... Well, ...specific questions such as, you know, what would you like your community to be? Um, we were a little bit... Um, limited by the pandemic in doing um, focus groups. We did do some focus groups. And in addition, the committee put together a very um, extensive survey, which was published um, online and was advertised widely in the community. And we had hundreds of people respond to the survey. So this isn't something that we just thought up. This is something the input was broad based from members of the community. And um, this is what they told us. And if I could have the next slide. <clears throat> Please, thank you. Um, so this is a word cloud of just some of the answers that people gave us. And some of our questions were open-ended where people could write um, responses in an open-ended fashion. And so these are some of the key words that we heard that people, you know, they want a friendly, safe, um, inclusive community. Um, they value um, the education of, uh, that our community has. They want people to feel welcome in our town. Um, those are some of the values that people um, gave to us and responded um, when they responded to, the, to our questions. So using the data that we collected, we reviewed and developed um, our goals and objectives um, for the library going into the future. I could have the next slide, please. Okay. <laughs> so, and I will say that uh, the next slide will be our vision and our mission. And this was reviewed and approved by the Library Board of Trustees. And you do have that in your packet for tonight. Thank you. So, our vision. So, based on what we heard uh, from the community, um, the we met and discussed all the input, all the data, and this is what we came up with for our vision. The Cemetery Public Library inspires an exclusive community that values exploration and connection through learning. So our mission, the Simsbury Public Library, provides free and equal access to information, experiences, educational resources that build community and inspire a lifetime of learning. I can have the next slide. Also important to us, um, the Library Board of Trustees felt that we wanted to, and the committee wanted to include a statement on equity, diversion, and inclusion. And I won't read it in, in uh, the full text, but um, you can see at the bottom that to promote these values, the Simpsons of Republic Library will create and sustain Oops, a culture <laughs> of respect in which individuals are heard, valued, and included. We want to remain engaged with the community in a process of continual improvement and responsiveness to matters of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, we want to develop We want to ex expand strategic partnerships and collaborations with local organizations that seek to overcome social injustice and advance equity in the community. Okay, if I 
could have the next slide, please. So our first goal, the Simsbury Public Library is the center of an ex inclusive community that values and welcomes peoples of all abilities, cultures, and lived experiences. We want to engage the community in a process of continual improvement and responsive, responsiveness to matters of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we want to, to increase services to underserved members of the community, enhance programming that fosters both in individuals and the community's understanding of social, cultural, intellectual, and political affairs. And we'd like to offer services to welcome new residents. Those are some of the objectives under goal one. Um, the second goal, next slide. Second goal, goal two. The library is a safe space for exploration that offers free and equal access to digital and physical resources. So some of the objectives under that goal, we'd like to offer optimal accessibility by presenting programs in the library, in the community, and online. And as we all know, this online piece has become um, more and more important um, to everybody in the community as we learned through the pandemic how important that was to all of us to be able to stay connected. Um, so this is a roadmap as we move into the future and we want to be ready, ready for that, for what the community needs. Um, we'll continually evaluate 24-7 access and ensure technology meets the needs of the community. And I would add in that regard to that, we just installed a book locker so that <laughs> um, we had a ribbon cutting not long ago. And that is it. that meets one of the objectives under this goal. Um, that's an example of one of the things that we're doing so that if you have a book on hold, you can call the library and they will put it in this locker and you can come anytime and pick it up. So. Um, another objective, explore requirements to provide hardware and internet access to patrons who cannot, a virtu cannot afford virtual connections without assistance. Not everybody has all that stuff at home. And so we felt that is an important goal. Um, we want to provide the highest level of security to both staff and visitors in the library. Um, regularly evaluate the need for refreshing and improving the library and offer welcoming and ma well-maintained grounds and facilities. Um, goal number three. Goal number three, through in-person and virtual engagement with information and people, the library inspires people to learn about themselves, their community, and the world. Um, so under this goal, um, some of our objectives are to promote the depth and variety of li library resources to the community, encouraging deeper and broader patron engagement. And, you know, one example of that is our library of things. Um, we offer not just books, but um, puzzles and games. And what else did I see there the other day? Help me out, Lisa. Binoculars. Binoculars. <laughs> so um, we're constantly evaluating our collections and trying to meet, you know, other needs of the community, not just books. Um, we want to increase collaboration and strategic partnerships with organizations, businesses, and other libraries to increase program diversity um, and encourage and in incubate innovation and ideas among patrons and the community. One of the things we heard um, when doing the survey was that how, how much of a community center people felt the library was and how important it was as a meeting place, as a place to exchange ideas. Um, we have our business resource center. It, we, you know, it's a little something for everyone and, and that's, that's what we're trying to do with this goal. Um, goal number four. Um, Simsbury Library supports a thriving economy with information, tools, and connections to promote businesses and careers. Um, we want to continue to grow a robust and relevant business and career center with a dedicated uh, business and career center coordinator, build on and expand partnerships with businesses and organizations to spark programs and initiatives, 
host programs at strategic, commercial, and nonprofits nonprofit sites to raise awareness of local resources and expertise. And under this, um, one, one example is going out into the community and providing programs, um, not so not just always in the library. So um, we want to strengthen the entrepreneurial resources to encourage business incubation, continually disseminate information resources and guidelines to the business community, support individual career development and employment with informational and skill building programs, maintain our innovators workshop to include relevant technologies, which are always changing as we know, um, and support and collaborate with the town's economic development commission. Um, so that's my presentation. Um, I, I will say it was a, um, a year long process. It was exciting to work with people. Um, it was challenging because some of our meetings were on Zoom, some of them were in person. Um, but I think that we, and with our online data and with our outreach and with having such a, um, a wonderful committee to work with, I think that we really um, put together a good plan that will take us in at least for the five years, next five years, and build on a foundation for the future. And I personally, I have lived in town for a very long time. I am extremely proud of our library. We have one of the best libraries around, and I think you can all be proud of it. We have um, a wonderful staff. The staff had input into this as well, um, and they are really an important part of our community, and we aim to inspire, explore, and connect. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> you want to make some comments or questions? I, I do. Yeah, sure. Um, I appreciate the presentation and, um, and everyone coming out for this. Um, how can um, the six of us support this vision? Um, obviously, um, supporting your the library's um, budget requests is table stakes. <laughs> but first. beyond that, how can we engage in this? Um, I think just by remaining um, aware, we have um, our a liaison from your board um, who comes to our meetings and um, just remaining connected uh, with what's going on to the library, um, just by supporting the events and the and the members of the community that use the library. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Nice seeing the Heather and the Amber's names in here too. <laughs> <laughs> and and I will say they were wonderful to work with, and we do miss them at the library board. But oh. our loss is your gain. <laughs> well, we are. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming out. Thank you very much. Uh, so I, I guess it's time for the first selectmen's report. Keep me on pace here tonight. Um, you can skip that if you want. Thank you. I'm going to make it really long now and read every word in here. Um, I, I basically, I'm saying that, you know, it's hard to believe that it's the end of April. And I'm hoping that May brings some better weather for us because it's been windy and the sun's been in and out. Um, so let's just hope it starts to really be spring. On May 3rd, everyone will have the opportunity to make their voices heard by voting in the budget referendum. Voting will be at Henry James from 6 to 8 p.m. And there is an option for absentee voting. You have to go to the town clerk's office to get an absentee application and make sure that you bring your ID. Um, the budget that's going out, everybody knows that it's in there, but it includes new staff, um, the, an IT specialist, two police officers, a CALEA specialist, um, based on um, using the grand list growth that we had, and we were able to do this without a mill rate increase, so taxes are remaining flat. So just remember that. We've had questions on the percentage of increase that people have seen, but there's no impact to the taxpayer. A lot of that was due to the ARPA funds, which we did use for some capital improvement projects that were on the books. Before I keep going, I want to thank everyone who participated in Simsbury's cleanup day on Saturday. Thank you all for giving up your Saturday morning to pick up trash and recyclables around town. And special thanks to Deputy First Selectman Amber Avuel for her organizational skills and to Tom Roy and Tom Taberski who were indispensable in making it all happen. I'm gonna skip this one. I do wanna report um, um, 
we talked about exit interviews. We've talked about personnel issues. The personnel subcommittee met last week to discuss the exit interview process to make sure that we have a standard documented process on how we capture feedback if employees choose to leave. We also discussed making sure that current employees understand the feedback channels available to them while still working here. This discussion led to the need for an update to the employee handbook, which I believe was already on Maria's plate. And this handbook is posted on our website. I included the link in here. And it, we met with the town attorney, the HR coordinator, and Maria. And it sounds like we're going to begin working on this over the summer. Uh, much needed improvement. We'll also confirm the role of personnel subcommittee in making sure all voices are heard from those who are employed to those who decide to move on as long as it meets the charter. It was also decided that the personnel subcommittee would start getting updates on the state of HR, including grievances with a timeline to be determined on that. That was suggested by our town attorney to bring information to the personnel subcommittee so we know what's going on. Um, my, May is bike friendly month. Um, this was a plug from, from Deb. Um, the public library is very active in the bikes um, this coming month. There's gonna be a Bikes for Transportation, Bikes for Fun event. There's gonna be an electric bike workshop and um, a fix a flat clinic on May 12th. And it's all in my report. I'm gonna cut it short because I don't wanna keep people waiting here, but. You can read it, it's good. It's a lot about the bikes. May, we're gonna go on our Selectman bike ride, which will also be fun too. Oh, well. And one thing she did say is to remind everybody that, you know, as the weather gets nicer, please be really careful that everybody's out there biking. Yes. Um, yes. So, and then June is Pride Month. We'll talk about June and May, <laughs> but um, there's a bunch of events that we'll announce as we get closer. There's plans for an annual flag raising and a proclamation along with a Pride picnic that we've had. The tentative date right now is June 4th. Um, stay tuned for dates. And just so everybody knows, there's an initiative from the LGBTQ community for businesses out there who want to be included in a new um, business directory. And I believe if you reach out to the Simsbury Granby Chamber of Commerce and Main Street Partnership, um, they can help you get listed in there. And that's all I have for tonight. All right. Thanks, Wendy. Good evening, everyone. Just a very uh, quick update under our coronavirus update. Um, we are experiencing a bit of an uptick in cases. Um, so I did just want to remind folks that we currently have uh, two ways for residents to obtain free COVID um, test kits. Um, they could pick those up at the Simsbury Public Library uh, at the main circulation desk um, during normal business hours of operation. There's also an opportunity for um, all U.S. households to uh, send in for a second order of free at-home COVID test. So we've provided a link in the town manager's report to that resource for folks who might be interested. Um, some very good news to share from the Department of Public Works. Um, our Public Works Director Town Engineer Tom Roy has been awarded the APWA Management Innovation Award. Um, a national award that recognizes an individual team or organization for the development, management, and implementation of a creative idea, program, process, or system that enhances the delivery of public work services to the public. Um, what some folks might not know is during the pandemic, uh, Tom developed an incredibly um, creative yet pragmatic system um, that we were able to put in place to help safeguard our community in the event of a COVID staffing shortage that the very critical uh, winter operations related to snow and ice removal, that we would continue to be able to, to provide that essential service even during a severe staffing shortage. Um, the model that Tom uh, developed and implemented here was then used um, not only around Connecticut, but New England and even nationally. So really proud of Tom and the work that he did and just want to thank him and his team for everything that they did to help keep our community safe um, and just to ensure that our critical infrastructure remained operational during that time. So very well-deserved kudos for, for good work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we have a couple of WPCA appointments. Um, we are welcoming two new staff members at the Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, Michael Morin has experience in industrial waste treatment and Lee Schmidt, who brings experience as an industrial mechanic. Um, they both have, we think, a skill set and a knowledge base that will complement our current staff really well. Um, these positions help to ensure that we're able to continue to safely treat our wastewater and to protect the environment. So welcome to Michael and to Lee. 
A few quick updates from social services. Um, we have completed our AARP tax assistant program. We really want to send a very big thank you to Tom Meek and his team of taxpayers uh, preparers. They generously volunteer their time and their talents. They were able to help uh, 152 taxpayers who live here in Simsbury file 158 tax returns. This is provided um, at no, no charge to our residents. 80% um, of those who were assisted were 66 years or older, and 101 uh, of those people were able to get a refund on their taxes. Um, we also really wanted to thank the work of the library staff and the senior center at, uh, staff as well for supporting the program. And for the energy assistance program, um, the last day to submit a fully completed application for that program is coming up on Thursday, April 28th. Um, if you still need assistance with that, please contact social services. And in regards to the renter's rebate program, the application period is opening up shortly on May 1st. Um, and we have the eligibility criteria provided in the report. And again, if uh, folks are interested in that program or need assistance, uh, please contact social services. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Selectman Action. Oh, uh, oh. oh. Selectman's reports. Oh, this, oh, I, I put, <laughs> I, like, I know. Okay, anybody have any committee or um, selectman liaison reports? I have a quick shout out I'd like okay. to make. Um, the Senior Center uh, publishes a newsletter every couple of months that lists all of the programs and events going on at the Senior Center. So if this is something that is programming that would be of interest to you and you are not receiving this um, newsletter, it would be great to sign up for, and you can contact the Senior Center at 860-658-3273 to get your name added to the mailing list. And there's just lots of programming coming up. And actually, um, this Wednesday, April 27th, is the deadline to register for a concert, which is gonna be on Monday, May 2nd at 11 o'clock um, with students from the Hart School and the Intonations um, uh, uh, choir group. So I just wanted to remind people to sign up for the newsletter and stay in the loop on all the events going on there. Thank you. Just a reminder that the Simsbury DEI Council has a uh, housing um, forum scheduled for uh, May 12th at 6.30 at the library. Um, it's in person, not virtual. And it, it's um, certainly affordability and affordable housing, I imagine will be part of it, but it really goes beyond that um, to include all kinds of, um, basically an overview, a lay of the land of, of all things housing um, and development. So um, encourage anyone who's interested in um, the way Simsbury, um, Simsbury looks, affordability, et cetera, um, to, to come and uh, learn. Thank you. Chris, are you waving? No. <laughs> okay. Wendy? Yeah. Hey, Wendy, it's Chris. Hey. Hi. Um, I, 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 hi, guys. I don't know that it was already mentioned. I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. Hi, Sean. Um, and, uh, or if it was already mentioned, or there's a spot later in the, I don't think there's a spot later in the agenda, but I just wanted to touch on uh, the cleanup this past Saturday. Was anybody going to talk about that and the success of it? I just mentioned it in my report, but sure, talk. You know, I just want to say that um, the, the number of people that I, I the, on, on the very, on the, on the negative but positive, if you will, um, the, the number of people that uh, I ran into later in the day commenting on people that they had seen wandering around town picking up trash and didn't know what it was about was a it was a I think is a real positive and people seeking to next time you know our next rotation around to seek more alternative outlets for the marketing and promotion a promotion of it and um, I think we could easily triple the number of volunteers uh, to already fantastic turnout just by uh, ratcheting up and looking to other alternative sources for getting the message out and just kudos to i know the effort that wendy you put into it certainly amber eric everybody uh, and town staff is awesome but just the feedback that i got there were more comments from people looking to get into the action if you will next time than actual people that i think were were there for the day who registered. So that, that's at a heart. That's a that's a great message, and I think an indication for the future for that event. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I would say that we did have over 150 participants um, in the event, and we collected over 500 pounds of trash. 
And I did hear some comments from people remarking on how much trash was being picked up, but this was the first time that we were able to run this event, I believe, since 2019. So it's been three years, and I think that that also will help with the messaging if we stay on uh, doing this on a regular basis. That's going to help us get the message out. So this was kind of a reboot, and uh, I think everything has been positive, and we certainly, I certainly would be happy to, to help coordinate it again because it was a wonderful event. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. No good deed goes bad. Um, I, I have one comment that I, I went to the Community for Care um, Narcan training that Heather raised last time that Promise to Jordan put on, and I just uh, would recommend that to anybody that can do that. because it was, it was fascinating. Um, it's sad and scary. But you, after you get the training, you get your own Narcan kit to take with you and to have with you at all times. In the event that someone needs it, you can use it. Um, so just keep your eyes out for that because it was it was really a good, it's really a good program. Anybody down this end? Okay, okay. So now we're going on to selectman action, and the first item is the draft correspondence regarding SB one thirty one contract terms for the pricing of and access to ebooks for libraries. Now I'm gonna let Maria take this over. Lisa, um, who would like to set the stage here? Um, I can start perhaps. Um, and then I'll, I'll ask Lisa just to add in. So um, uh, Selectman Getz had brought this up uh, to, to us for a possible um, inclusion for the Board of Selectmen's consideration. Um, this is legislation um, that the library director um, has fl flagged as potential legislation that would be very favorable for our public libraries here in Connecticut. Um, I know that the library board, many members um, feel that way as well. I, I personally uh, believe that this would also be, be favorable um, for libraries in Connecticut. So essentially, um, you know, I'll, I'll let Lisa talk a little bit about the background. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you do it, Lisa. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'm like, you're here. This is like great timing. I'll, I'll let you do it. Sure. <laughs> So actually, this um, disproportionate cost to libraries for ebooks has been a problem since the inception of ebooks many, many, many years ago. Um, the publishers claim that because the libraries can distribute titles to a wide range of people and many numbers of people, um, we're taking money away from authors, we're taking money away from publishers, when in reality, we're actually building engagement for them. So that's a falsehood. Um, Many states across the nation have been trying to get this leg legislation passed in their states and have been having trouble because they've been coming at it from the stance of copyright law. Whereas here in Connecticut, we're very lucky that our state librarian is also a lawyer and she's decided that it's probably a better way to come at it from contract law. So that is how Connecticut is coming forth with this legislation and we're very optimistic that it will pass. For background information for everyone at home, libraries pay six times more than you as consumers do for ebooks and e-audiobooks. Um, and then for libraries, we have a limited time that we can actually own these titles. After two years, they disappear and go out of the collection. And should we want to maintain them like Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets, you would want that as an ebook forever. Um, you need to repurchase it at the escalated price. So this is something that if passed here in Connecticut, will hopefully set a precedent for the nation going forward for libraries, which would be a wonderful thing. Because as you know, due to the pandemic, the use of e-content has nearly doubled here in Simsbury. It's nearly tripled. Um, so <coughs> we're watching this very closely and we would very much appreciate your support. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Representative Hampton, who was a co-sponsor of this bill. Um, he understands the problem and he is always a passionate supporter of libraries anyway. So. And I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Sure. Sean, I, I do. So educate me. Is there a difference in, in a paper copy of a book from what I buy and from the library buys from a price standpoint? No. There's not. So it's huh. the same. Not. Okay. Interesting. That's really interesting. Actually, for a paper copy of a book, because libraries go through jobbers, we pay less than you do. That's amazing. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jeez. And then again, you can only, you now <laughs> when, when the library purchases an ebook, you can loan it out one at a time or multiple copies, or how does that work from a loan? For the most part, you can loan it one at a time because you're loaning the license. So we do have a hold list. So, right? so, so, yeah, that's, that's, and that's what I thought you were going to say. I just wanted to confirm yep. that. That so yeah, you're paying six times yes. more than than the. I think if we were able to loan it out to six people at a time, then maybe there's some yeah. understanding of that. Right. But one copy, right? Like exactly. That, yeah, I agree. This makes so no all, sense. All this does is it treats digital books more similarly to paper books. The, the legislation. The legislation. The legislation yeah. would treat them that way. Yes, for sure. 
And you have to think about ebooks and the audiobooks as an access issue as well. People mm -hmm. with learning disabilities certainly can get more out of an e audiobook than they could out of a print book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of I mean, it's, it sounds crazy that that's how it works today, right? right? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a letter in here um, that is, is made out to Senator Kevin Wickos and Representative John Hampton. And if the Board of Selectmen, um, and this is where Maria comes into play. She takes things that she hears at our board meetings or hear from, from members of the board and translates them into actions that we can move forward. Um, so, you know, Heather had expressed an interest um, and I had raised the question, when do we, when do we respond to, there's a lot of bills out there. When do we respond on our own to a bill? Like for the, the SCTV, we have that bill. When do we respond as a board? Um, <coughs> it doesn't, you know, it's a little, little fuzzy. Um, but in this case, I think as a board, this only helps our taxpayers, yes. right? And our library. And it makes sense that we endorse this uh, at a board level. If everybody agrees, I would read the motion. Well, I have to read the motion, then we're going to vote on it. So, okay. So, um, move effective April 25th, 2022, to approve the presented correspondence supporting SB 131 and to authorize Town Manager Maria Capriola to send the letter on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. So moved. That's a move. Second. Um, Heather, second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So, this letter's going out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being the store. Touch <laughs> You beat me to it. <laughs> Okay, so the next item up is another draft correspondence. Again, another thing taken from our meeting and move forward. Um, and this is a draft correspondence from the Board of Selectmen regarding outdoor dining. And again, I will let Maria give um, the background on how this initiated. Yeah, thank you. So at your April 6th uh, meeting, the Board of Selectmen had extended the fee waiver for permits associated with outdoor dining. Um, during that meeting, some of the board members had expressed a desire to forward correspondence to the Zoning Commission, um, indicating your support for outdoor dining should uh, the statewide temporary legislation not get extended again into the future. Um, so we did our best to prepare some draft correspondence, which we think uh, summarized the sentiment of the board at that meeting. Um, it's included um, for review and discussion in your packet this evening. Okay, does anybody have want to comment on this? Um, Say anything additional, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, as, as Wendy, you teed up on the last item, I appreciate you turning our questions and comments into to something that's of action. You know, again, it's the concern I think that I had and others had was, you know, when the when the pandemic's in the rear view, mm -hmm. that we just force all the businesses back to the way it used to be when there's a lot of good things that have come out of it. And, you know, what have we learned? What can we move forward with? And how do we change and adapt so that we don't put unnecessary or restrictive, you know, process back on the businesses once, you know, we're theoretically out of this, and again, and what things don't we like? What you know, what didn't work that we don't want to continue either. So, I appreciate that this, this came before us. Mm -hmm. Yep, and and it's a good way to just show our support for um, being flexible and moving forward with local businesses. Even though we cannot, <laughs> uh, we do understand that we do not have the authority to alter state regulations um, on here. So, I'm going to read the motion. Um, move effective April 25th, 2022, to approve the presented memo regarding outdoor dining regulations and process to the Zoning Commission and to authorize Town Manager Maria Capriola to send the memo on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. So I'll move that. Okay. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the letter's going out too. Okay, the next up is our tax refunds, which I'm going to discuss. I'm just going to move effective April 25th, 2022 to approve the presented tax refunds in the amount of $340.41. 370. 370. 370. Oops. And to authorize, do I have to say it again? I would. 370 and 41 cents and to authorize town manager Maria E. Capriola to execute the tax refunds. We'll move that. Okay. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. The next item is um, at the grant application to the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving to support the food program. I will turn this over to Maria because there's a little change why we're doing it this way tonight. Yeah, thank you. So there is just, um, as Wendy indicated, a nuance change with this program. Um, in the past, on an annual basis, um, the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving had been providing us with an annual donation to support our food program. In recent years, um, that donation had been around $5,000 per year. Um, they have uh, essentially switched their process and they're now requiring that we submit an application 
um, through a competitive program for what they call their basic human needs funding. Um, so we are just seeking your support this evening to apply for a grant um, through the foundation in the amount of $6,000 that would support our food program such as uh, Cheese Day and our food closet. Okay, anybody have any questions on that? Okay, so move effective April 25th, 2022 to submit a grant application to the Hartford Foundation's Basic Human Needs Program and to authorize Town Manager Maria Cabriola to execute the grant application. And in the event that the grant is awarded, to move to accept the grant and to authorize Town Manager Maria Cabriola to execute all documents related to the grant award. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that motion passes. Um, and item E is the fiscal year 2022 historic documents preservation grant program. We'll let Maria explain this one also. Sure. So this is an annual program um, provided by the state. Um, based on our population, we're eligible for a grant in the amount of $7,500. Um, and this typically is around the preservation of historic documents, such as land records, birth records, etc. Um, the town clerk has prepared a grant application for us. Um, this particular project that she's proposing um, would involve um, birth records um, from 1975 through 1999. Um, and would be placing these records into archival binders, um, which will help to not only create um, improved certified copies, but it's going to help preserve the integrity of the original document that we have. Um, so we would just be seeking your permission to apply for this grant. Okay. Okay. So move effective April 25th, 2022, to submit the fiscal year 2023 historic documents preservation program grant application and to authorize Maria Capriola, town manager, to designate Trish Monroe, town clerk, as the agent for making the above application. And in the event the grant is awarded, move to accept the fiscal year 2023 historic documents preservation program grant and to authorize Maria Capriola, town manager, to execute all documents related to the grant award. I'll move that. Okay, Eric. I'll second. Um, Amber second that. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that passes. Honestly. And the next item is item F to schedule a public hearing for proposed amendments to the solid waste ordinance chapter 133. So this came about at our May March 28th meeting. I'm not sure who wants to discuss this. Go for it, Tom. Since you won the award, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to revoke it if it doesn't go from chapter 133. Oh, it's been a great day. Uh, this, this really is just a procedural thing since we did vote to move away from our relationship with Mira. And as you all recall, we're now going to be allowing our trash haulers in town to bring our uh, municipal solid waste and recycling to any licensed facility that they have a contractual relationship with. Part of that is just undoing this ordinance, which really was put into place way back when we first joined Mira. Okay. Okay, we've all read the ordinance. We saw the changes. They're in the packet if anybody's interested. Um, so I'm going to move. Does anybody have any questions? No. Move effective April 25th, 2022 to set a public hearing to receive public comment concerning proposed revisions to Chapter 133 of the Town Code concerning storage, collection, and disposal of solid waste for 6 p.m. on Monday, May 9th, 2022. Move that. Sean? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so mark your calendars for May 9th. The public hearing. Thank you. All right. Oh, do you want to stay up for this one too? I was just going to make it yeah, two for. Okay. <laughs> so this one is the supplemental appropriation request for the Simsbury Community Media Studio Capital Improvements. I just want to say, can I say a couple of things? So this came up at our um, budget hearing that this was a, um, a current need because of equipment that we've gotten and um, it was slotted for the next year's budget. So it's kind of being moved up to this year. And then I'm going to let Tom take it over. Well, I, I, I think you hit all the key points. I think that um, it's a relatively um, expensive or small, when you think about all that we get from SCTV to update their, their space, their space hasn't been updated in decades. And with the donation that they received of the ESPN studio, it's really gonna allow them to have just an exciting new set of programming and really, I think, bring some high school sports and some other things down there that's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. And we're really confident that for the $45,000, we can do all of the flooring, repaint the walls, um, 
do some architectural improvements to um, in and around the windows and clean up the ceiling. So it's gonna be a much nicer space. Still not perfect, but it's gonna be a much nicer and more usable space for them. Okay. Okay, do um, we have any questions up here? Um, I, the only comment that I had is on the, the funding right now, we're doing the supplemental appropriation. And then you also said if we have year end savings in the facilities budget, we can use that or replenish the, the use. So it's just, just wanted to comment. Yeah, Glad we, to see that in there. Yeah, just because of the, um, the urgency for right. Sainsbury Community Media, um, you know, we thought, okay, the Capital Reserve is where we have funds currently available. Um, there may be some operating budget savings at year end within the facilities budget. So if, um, for example, this board or the Board of Finance felt strongly that they wanted to replenish the Capital Reserve at year end savings, that's something that we flagged and, and can certainly take a look at. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so there just was from an order of operations standpoint, we're, we're paying for this now at capital right. reserves and then we're going to use year end versus making you wait until July 2nd, right? Mm -hmm. I, th I think I think that's the real key. Yeah. First thing, yeah. We're, yeah. We, we feel confident that we're going to have year end, but yeah. we're still far enough away that there are still some, some chances for some uncertainties. And the second thing is we have to have everything lined up so that we can get this done quickly this summer when we have a break in the town meetings because mm -hmm. unfortunately SCTV is going to be down for a number of weeks while we do this. So we're hoping mm -hmm. to do this all in 10 days. Oh. Is this the control room as well, not just the studio? Yeah, okay. things uh, that went far over my head today in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so not just the big room, the little room to the left that we all, the magic, where all the magic happens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Server room too, so awesome. So that makes more sense. Do we get a tour when it's all done so we could come in? Oh yeah, there's, there's gonna be a ribbon cut in the whole thing. Oh goody. Yay. Right. Not like we're, ESPN we're kicked yeah. in here. <laughs> yeah, we're good at river counting. So we we do, we <laughs> like those. <laughs> Okay, just so to, oh, 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 I was just no, gonna go say, sure. just to be clear, like these were improvements that were planned to be made sure. mm -hmm. next fiscal year, but we're moving them up because of, in light of this new donation, that That's it makes correct. sense to do mm -hmm. this work now so that we can put this new set in. So yeah. it's just, it's all, yeah, you could see it. If you look yeah. at the budget, you can yeah. see it in there for 23, 24, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So move effective April 25th, 2022 to approve a supplemental appropriation for Simsbury Community Media Studio capital improvements in the amount of $45,000 as presented. I'll move that. Eric? I'll second. Amber? All those in favor say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. Okay. Get back to work then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, item H. This is another supplemental appropriation request for the Farmington Valley Health District. This has to do with the ARPA funding. So I'm gonna let Maria talk about this one. Sure. Um, so this is very similar to the request that we received um, from the Farmington Valley Health Des District. Um, during the second round of federal stimulus dollars um, related to the pandemic. Um, because the health district is not a town department, the only way that they can access uh, those funds is to make a formal request to us. Um, so they have prepared a request um, for um, potential use of some of the town's ARPA dollars. They have made this request to all of its 10 member towns. Um, they also are proposing that the contributions would be proportional based on our population. So it's very similar to how our annual allocation for their operating budget works. And it's also how they handled the second round um, of stimulus uh, funding request as well. Um, the Health District Board of Directors did review and endorse that request. Um, just in fair disclosure, Melissa and I are both on the board and we did, did support that request. Um, we had uh, forwarded the information on to the Finance Subcommittee. Um, who did take a look at that at their recent meeting um, and um, supported forwarding this request onto the full board of selectmen. Um, and if you all do endorse this, um, the next step would be for the supplemental to go to the board of finance at their upcoming May 17th meeting. Um, we did, uh, you may recall when we were um, sort of doing the look ahead for how much we might want to set aside for the health district, um, we had said that like, let's try and set aside about $250,000 in total between the two tranches of money, not yet knowing what their needs are going to be, um, what the request was going to look like, perhaps if there might be you know, future strains of, of the virus down the road that might need additional funding or resources. Um, so this uh, request of $100,000 is well within that amount that we were asking um, you all to set aside. Yeah, and we had we had a lot of discussion at the um, finance subcommittee about this because the, this is one of the not, not done during the budget process because we needed the funding sooner or we didn't have the amount at the time. And that's why it's being done as a supplemental approach. 
appropriation, but we all agreed that this was kind of our dues here for, for the work that they do and are doing for us. Um, so, question. question, sure. <clears throat> so in 26, who's paying for the community outreach coordinator? Yeah, so. Much like the social worker we discussion asked about we had. That. Yeah. Right, because I get that we're using ARPA now, but are we all of a sudden gonna get hit with a proportional increase over and above the aggressive, but appropriate, you know, increase that the health district has already come to us on because we don't lay off staff, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. right. So, we do suspect it'll be a combination of grant funding that would support this position in the future as well as um, a potential operating cost as well. Okay. Um, a lot of the health districts that are fortunate enough to have this type of position, there often are a lot of grant opportunities specifically for this kind of work. Um, so, we do anticipate that it will probably be a combination again of grant funding as well as um, perhaps an operating budget impact. All right, and then I, maybe a, a little bit out of the field, but the, mm -hmm. Melissa, you were on originally the, the phased increase to get to the different level of accreditation, right? Mm -hmm. That plan's basically been on hold, right, for the pandemic and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But as we get back to that, are we also gonna potentially experience increases on an annual basis? And again, I know I'm asking you to look at a crystal ball, but you know, so potentially additional increases from the health district as well. And again, not objecting to them, but that's, mm -hmm. that, that's potentially out there. I would say it's potentially yeah. out there still. They definitely okay. put the accreditation work on hold. Um, yeah. I know they're restarting it um, now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yes, potentially. And I think this position in particular, Maria, I don't know if there's been discussion about this in, in the months that I wasn't on the board, but I think this p position in particular is one that fits into accreditation. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. because that's that was my next question. Good. The um, yeah. community health um, assessment and all that work that goes mm -hmm. along with accreditation. So I think there's hopefully value in having this position on multiple fronts but uh, okay. to answer your question yes probably no i i appreciate that i've learned so much because i originally was very confused when i first got on here about how the health district was funded mm -hmm. but there's no state money right or very little state or very little state funding that comes for the health district the member municipalities and again it's that capita, but it's right. not it's it's not, it's not, yeah. it's not <laughs> what's needed to, to fund the basic legislative required services that right. the health district comes in and even with the per capita contributions of all member towns Technically, the health district is not able to meet the legislative required minimums, right? Yes. And that's not a criticism, but things have fallen through the cracks because the funding is simply not there for it. And that five-year plan, right, with the increased funding was trying to get closer to that um, requirement. So it's, and again, no criticism that it was put on hold, rightfully so. Everybody was distracted. But, you know, again, this is another opportunity where, uh, you know, again, the state doesn't properly fund you know, a mandate that comes down and we're left at the local levels to, to, to fill in the gap, so. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one thing I wanna just mention is that we, as a group, we, this is, you know, any other further ask from Farmington Valley Health District for ARPA usage, we'll come back to the committee, yeah. we'll reevaluate that. We're not promising that we will fund anything further depending on the town's needs because there was the the discussion came up about a yeah. need for a potential building that would just have to come back and see where we stand if we were to use additional ARPA funds so uh, just that, that makes you more com us all comfortable anyway um, all right so now I can read the motion to move effective April 25th 2022 to approve a supplemental appropriation for funding for the Farmington Valley Health District in the amount of one hundred thousand and fifty six dollars I'll move that Thank you, Sean. I'll oh, go ahead. Second. Eric, Eric second. Not. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And please thank Jennifer and the team okay. as well for well, everything well. that they've done well. and then some. You well, they've done an outstanding job. You say they're phenomenal is an understatement, right? That's I mean, yes. yes. Agreed. Hope we don't need them. We will let yeah. you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I didn't never have I thought we'd get as close to the health district as we have for the last two years, but thank God we've had them. Yes. Agreed. Well, like them and SDTV, like yes. where, where yes. we have all been the last two years. Um, so now I'm going to move on to appointments and resignations. I have one here for a reappointment of Richard Durr to the Public Building Committee and move effective April 25th, 2022 to reappoint Richard A. Durr as a regular member of the Public Building Committee with a term ending January 1st, 2026. Move that. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, anybody have any comments, changes, corrections to the minutes of April 6th? No. no. So then I'm going to ask for a motion to move to executive session per general statute section 1- Did somebody say no? Oh, no. 
hallway. I think it was just oh, in the hallway. Down. Sorry, <laughs> I just said I don't want to make another mistake. One dash two hundred six B strategy and negotiations of a pending claim and slash or litigation Kavanaugh claim under the Workers' Compensation Act. Anybody want to move? Can we bring it with us? Oh, I don't have you. Just Melissa and myself. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> so we are now entering executive session.